Hello, I'm Kamora, or by my Twitch name, Sunny Tatman. This is Wayward Souls. And, uh. I guess. Uh, before we. Uh, take any more time, uh, we should get started. Uh, are we good on time, or. Yep, can't be done whenever. Okay. Starting in 5, 4, 3, Two, one, go! Alright, so this is Wayward Souls, developed by Rocket Cat Games of uh, Death Road to Canada fame. Uh, it is a action, uh, it is a action RPG roguelike. Uh, so, uh, dungeons are randomly generated every time you play the game. Uh, and yeah, you gotta stay on your toes and be ready for whatever comes at you. So, uh, the first dungeon here is the Mines, and I'm using the Spell Sword. Uh, Spell Sword has a multi directional back uh, that'll let you get through rooms pretty quickly. Uh, there's a lot of times uh, in the Mines where you don't actually have to fight the enemies, like right here. Uh, so being able to dash through those rooms is nice. Uh, this is an Ember Forge. Uh, they grant you permanent passive bonuses. Basically the equivalent of, like, finding an item in, a in any other rook light. And with that, we're already done with the second floor. This is going pretty alright. Uh, so besides the multi-directional dash, uh... Spell Sword uses a short sword, uh, but that's about the extent of his kit. Um... Aside from the past, uh, the, aside from the consumable items he gets, uh, so every character has a set of consumable items that they can get. Uh, it varies from from character to character. Uh, Spell Sword, as you might be able to tell from the name, uh, gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of magic scrolls that he can utilize. Uh, and those are good for uh, crowd control. Uh, Dealing a lot of damage uh, pretty quickly. Uh, another nice thing is that uh, his buffs will, uh, is that any sort of stat buffs, so like uh, temporary stat buff, I should say, so like the speed up that I have right now uh, will last longer on him just because of his, uh, his passive upgrades. Uh, speaking of those upgrades, uh, you're gonna notice that I'm picking up coins and I'm not really using them. Uh, those coins are used. Uh, in between runs, uh, for upgrades, it's kind of a meta progression system similar to, uh, Rogue Legacy. Uh, in between runs, you can spend your money to, uh, uh, increase passive attributes such as the amount of health you regain at health fountains, as well as maximum health, critical hit rate, uh, the good stuff. Um, it's not really like a meta build for every character, because you just kind of build them. Uh, with, uh, with what you can afford. Uh, and yeah, I know I've been motor mouthing for a bit, but, uh, I want to put out there that, uh, I sincerely love this game, and, uh, I'm super happy to be able to show it off, uh, to all you guys. Um, and yeah, so, uh, while we have a little bit of downtime, I can explain sort of the things you want to focus on in this game. A lot of this game is about threat assessment and management, uh, deciding which enemy in the room is the most important to kill, uh, how to go about killing it while avoiding other enemies, and, uh, how you're going to move around the room as you're doing things. Seems like I took a wrong turn. It's fine, though. Not a huge deal. Oh, I should have known that was the exit. Silly me. But we're at the last floor of the mines already. Um, mines is the shortest of the dungeons. It's only five floors. Uh, but even on your first time playing, it's not going to seem that easy. Uh, 
like with most roguelikes, uh, you get better at it over time. Uh, so you just keep putting practice in, and you'll get there eventually. So, uh, we've got our first boss, Humphrey. Uh, Humphrey has a really annoying thing we, he can do, where he jumps in the air for, like, a really long time. And then you can't hit him during that period. Lord, I just realized it's been that loud the entire time. I am sorry. Uh, but, uh, with that out of the way, time to go up to the tower. Uh, tower, uh, we take the mage. Uh, one simple reason. There's gonna be the shield guys. Oh, hello. I got hit by the first enemy. That's not a good omen. Turn the phone upside down and don't look at chat right now. Uh, the shield guys here, uh, with any other class, you'd have to, like, hit them with a, with a power attack, uh, to break the shields and more easily attack them. Uh, however, with the mage, it's just as simple as smack them in the face. Uh, with your magic bolt. So, mage plays quite a bit differently. Uh, sh the energy bar, uh, instead of, uh, whereas with the spell sword, it, uh, fueled his dashes, uh, the energy bar, in this case, uh, fuels your regular attacks. If you don't have energy, you can do regular attacks. Uh, so you gotta pick your times, uh, pick your timing of when to attack and when to retreat. Phew! Uh, also, unlike the spell sword, Abby has two sub-weapons. Uh, she has the wind cloud, uh, that right there, which will push... Uh, which will push enemies away and uh, erase projectiles. And then she also has the flamethrower, which you just saw, which uh, hits in a cone in front of her, uh, deals an initial hit of damage, and then deals damage over time. I'm gonna run and get this fountain. I forgot that was there. Is stream volume okay? Grotesques. Uh, so, these guys, uh, once you deal a certain amount of damage, uh, they will uh, turn to stone and then burst, and that burst can hurt you, so be careful there. Um, and then once you deal, uh, and then once you hit them enough, after that, uh, they'll go down for good. Okay, volume's good. <sighs> So a lot of that commentary was front-loaded, uh, I'm well aware, but, uh, uh, we're about to get even more. Um, so those cages are, have pets, and what pets do is they will provide a small bonus. Um, uh, this one increases my critical hit rate by, like, 2%. Uh, there's another one that will jump at enemies and attack them, another that will increase the rate at whichever cover health. There's a whole variety of things that pets can do for you. Uh, however, it is important to note pet tiers. Uh, what I grabbed, at, uh, the uh, cage that I opened is what's considered a tier 1 cage. Uh, meaning that it can only have tier 1 pets in it. Uh, once you, And you, you have to open a tier 1 cage uh, if you want to start getting tier 2 or 3 pets. Uh, so if you see that tier 1 pet cage, you usually want to go for it. Because uh, you could potentially get something that either makes you run faster or can save you in a tough situation. By the way, you might be seeing some clutch moments uh, live on stream. 
So, be ready for it. Uh, this game's estimate is like 20 minutes higher than my PB, and that's because, you know, it's a roguelite. Your death is pretty likely, so if I have to restart uh, a dungeon, I have to restart a dungeon, but... Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Alright, so these big guys, uh, with the ball and, with the ball and chain, uh, these guys work a bit weird. So, if you were, if they start swinging their ball and chain, and you were directly in front of them, uh, like, if you're standing in front of them, uh, there's a chance for them, for the swing to come down faster than, uh, there's a chance for, bleh, there is a chance for the swing to come down faster than normal. Uh, so you want to circle around them, make sure you're not standing in the same place, and just kind of weave in and out. Uh, what we picked up there was the Blaze Weave Cloak. Uh, it's basically the same as the standard, as the default cloak, except it deals more damage when you hit enemies with it. Something I've yet to mention is that uh, with cer with uh, a certain upgrade, uh, Mage will be able to recover her energy as she uh, as she uses her alternate attacks. So if I'm out of energy and I use the flamethrower, uh, my energy refills. Uh, so if you need to constantly apply damage, uh, that's a good way of doing it. How did I not get hit there? Oh god! Karma! So something that's important to to note with this game is that this is a lot. This is your your eh. most times your run isn't going to be saved by you getting that one item in the Ember Forge. Um, this is a much more skill reliant game, uh, as opposed to luck reliant. Go away. And we have a tier 2 pet. And it's just the direct upgrade to the cat we already had. Let's go. It's a it's a 4% crit chance instead of a 2. Uh So I see y'all are talking about uh you know, liking to see on obscure games. Uh, so, this game came out of Early Access, like, a week ago? I don't- not even? Uh, but this game has been... CHICKEN! Chicken is nice, it gives you run speed. Whee! Um, uh, this game has been available on- has been available on mobile platforms since... 2014? This game has been a around for a while, but it's only been in its current form for, like, maybe a year. I do actually have a bit of a personal history with this game. Uh, I, uh, I used to be on my school's newspaper team, and, uh, I wrote a review on this game, and, uh, that review was seen as one of the best reviews submitted in the year in the state of Michigan. Uh, I got an honorable mention for that one. Uh, and it's just me talking about a game I love. And talking about why I love it.
so yeah, that's my that's my personal history with this game. Uh I have just I I just love this game. <laughs> uh something I especially like is uh and you're not going to be able to really experience it, it much because I'm talking. Uh but this game has fantastic atmosphere. Uh, really good atmospheric music, uh, the lighting, the, uh, the, the sound effects. This game is a really good example of what good folly can do for, in it, for, for a, uh, for a video game. There's a surprising amount of enemies in this room. Oh my goodness! You want to see something cool? Uh... 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 Consumable scrolls? Uh will destroy any sort of, uh, projectiles coming at you. Uh, it's not really that useful most times, but... Uh, swag. Uh... Yeah. Fighting a lot of grotesques. Not a huge fan. Uh, another pretty valuable skill in this game is knowing your damage numbers, knowing how many t hits it takes to kill an enemy, and that sort of thing. Hee <laughs> hee. That's a fun little thing you can do with those hidden thieves if you... Uh, they always appear behind you to attack you. So if you just, like, run through a door before they can attack you, you just kind of... You just kind of get a free freebie. Alright, and we're at the final floor of the tower. That's a really good pet. Uh, so this is the water sprite. Uh, it will occasionally shoot out a slowing bolt. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, can help you deal with enemies uh, that you can't exactly pay attention to at the moment. Really, really great. Also, check out the soundtrack for this game if you if you get the time. It is absolutely phenomenal. Face tank! I'm sorry, what, Trunks? Okay. Volume is still good. Alright, and on to the last area. We're going down to the catacombs. Uh, we take warrior here. Uh, I'm just mostly because I'm scared. 
Uh, this area has a lot of dangerous enemies, and the warrior's ability to uh, basically instantaneously uh, negate damage with the shield is extremely valuable. Uh, the th main thing you're going to want to look out for are those thorned insidiators. Uh, this is a room from Mage Gauntlet. This is an this is a tile set from Mage Gauntlet. I'm glad we got this in stream. Because that's actually kind of sort of really stinking cool. Uh that's never happened before. Had to get one of those in there. Uh, so the warrior has a shield that he can pull out at any time to instantly block any kind of damage. He also has throwing axes. Uh, they deal a decent amount of damage, but the main thing is just that they're ranged. Makes life easier. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the War of Attrition on Amaranth there. Uh, the main thing you're gonna be looking out for in those in these floors is the thorned insidiators. Those are the guys that are invisible until uh, until they they're ready to attack you. Uh, I took a lot of damage in that room. I'm not happy about that. Uh. There's going to be an Insidiator in this room. So that big cloak dude is a thorn... is a thorn... uh... Terran Mater? I believe is the... is the name? All the enemies here have weird names, but uh... They have a very... Uh, they have a specific attack pattern that you can easily exploit if they're the only thing in the room, and because of that, I recommend taking them out last. That's a mine! Mines are mean. Either pull out your shield or move away as soon as you hear it. The Thorned Heart is extremely good. Uh, if an if a enemy hits uh, it hits you with a melee attack when the the Thorned Heart is out, uh, they just take a hit of damage. Oh. Spiders! Uh, so as much as my friend R30 Hedron hates spiders, there it is! Give him the vintage strike! Uh, so, that's a fun little glitch in this game. Uh, if you hit an enemy just as they begin to jump, they will just at go flying. Uh, it is a it is a glitch that uh, Rocket Cat has that the uh, the developers of this game Rocket Cat have acknowledged on Twitter and refused to fix because it's, it's funny. Which you know what I respect it. Also, Vintage Strike, shout out if you get it. I don't need to deal with you. I'm going away. Uh, so I haven't been mentioning those. Uh, those are uh, blessing statues. Uh, they give you either a boost to your uh, critical hit rate, a boost to your speed, or a boost to your defense. Uh, the crit rate and the haste uh, blessings will block uh, two hits for you. The Defense Blessing will block three. It's basically just free health. Which is pretty nice. 
I almost walked right into that spike trap. That would have been rather silly. That room is a lot more rough to get through. So, uh, in when you're dealing with rooms and zombie floors, take out those ghost-looking guys first. Uh, I believe they're called wraiths. Um, uh, they can summon other zombies, and that's no fun. Uh, so the uh, that uh, gauntlet upgrade that I picked up will let you. Uh, uh, when you throw your axe, uh, you can, uh, get rid of enemy projectiles. Uh, any e enemy, any enemy projectile that, uh, crosses over with the axe, uh, will instantly be destroyed. Thank goodness for the Amber Slug. And giving me more health. <sighs> and downwards we go. All right. Uh, I believe this is floor five. Yep. We're closing in. There you saw the uh, the Thorned Hearts melee. Uh, melee, uh, deflection, I suppose? Melee deflection, uh, property in action. These little assassin spider guys are the worst. Uh, they're straight up one of my least favorite enemies. Uh, give them another vintage strike. Um, yeah, those guys suck. Uh, they're super fast, they're super annoying. If they didn't exist in the game, my life would be easier. Uh, but then again, I could probably say that about literally every enemy, so... Uh, is that the exit right there? It is! Lucky me! Ah, faceless. Welcome to the Cult of the Faceless floors. Uh, some of the straight up weirdest floors in terms of enemies. Uh, that pile of mounts is a uh, is a chatter beast. I don't know the names of the faceless zombies, but I just call them faceless zombies. Uh, because self descriptors, uh, they explode. Not fun to deal with. But luckily for me, oh my lord. The projectile erasing axes are a great way to deal with smaller enemies, with smaller projectile shooting enemies that only take one hit. Forge. Neither of those are good. Uh, the skull hack makes your attack speed slower, which I don't want. Um, and the lion fang spear changes the way your power attack works, and I really don't like the way that, uh, and I really don't like that change, so I don't usually take it. time we're at, but we might need to make sure the next runner is ready to go. Because uh, <laughs> this is going a lot better than I expected it to, but I probably should not have said that because this run is about to die horrifically because of that.
Probably not. Yep, we're on our way to the last floor. Wow, 2930. Uh, my PB for this game is a 28. Uh, I think it's 2843. So, pre making pretty good time. Uh, that's just what I wanted. Uh, so the final boss is the bearer, uh, is the bearer of the, the mask. Uh, this boss is made significantly easier with hourglasses. Uh, so what hourglasses do is that they will create a field around you that slow down enemies and erase any projectiles that enter the vicinity. Uh, this boss is all projectiles. So, as you're gonna see... It makes this fight a joke. Uh, be ready on time. I I hate mages too, Blythe. Don't worry. And time. And that was Wayward Souls. Uh, so. Uh, I want to say that, uh, I truly do love this game. Uh, I fully recommend you buy it. It's like 15 bucks on Steam right now. Um, thank you for all the GGs. Thank you. Uh, that, that was a 3109, I, I, I missed the time slip, but that's a, just an approximation. So. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. What's your PB? Uh, I think it's like a tw it's a twenty eight thirty something. Pretty good for a marathon run. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of went estimate by nineteen minutes. So. <laughs> uh, oops. You have all the time you want for outro. <laughs> um. <laughs> hmm. Because we are, uh, we, I don't even have the next runner set up, so that's gonna be done all during intermission. But, uh, oops. You wanna talk about anything post Discord links? Anything? Um, and now's the time. I, uh, okay. <laughs> Run it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I wanna say thank you to, uh, a number of people. Um, uh, I wanna thank, uh, the Rogue Nation Discord, uh, for really kind of, uh, really kind of embracing this run. Uh, no, that was not a world record kapow, but, um, uh, it was still a pretty good run. Um, I want to thank them, I want to thank anybody on the variety of discords that I'm on who came out to watch. And, uh, Uh, I guess I could talk about the Labyrinth. Uh, so, this run is kind of being theory-crafted by myself. I'm really the only active runner for this game. But the Labyrinth is literally the combined length of the Mines, the Tower, and the Catacombs. Uh, which is kind of ridiculous. And runs take like an hour. So... Yeah. Um, and then, uh, there's also an endless mode for this game, which is just get through as fast as you can, uh, as long, as far as you can. And then there's gauntlet mode. And gauntlet mode, you know what? I'll show it off. Uh. How, uh, um, actually I don't know if we have time for that. How long would it take? Uh, yeah, good point. Uh, probably yeah, would sorry. take too long. <laughs> sorry. No. Sorry, sorry. Uh, gauntlet is basically just super challenging uh, rooms with a lot of enemies in them, and it's kind of just, uh, get through it. Uh, I think there's only, like, five floors, but I've yet to do it myself. Oh! 
Right, uh... So, I also want to thank, uh... The Stelgo speedrun community, uh, for kind of being my inspiration and gateway into speedrunning. Uh... And if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a link on my Twitch page. But besides that, I think I'm done. I right, thank you for running. Not a problem. <laughs>